this is the hallway in the building where I live. Kind of reminds me of The Shining. Come play with us. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Peter Parker's sleeping. I'm trying to be quiet. Hopefully he doesn't wake up. So annoying. You know, I didn't want to go out and let's just address the elephant in the room. Okay, it's out of control, humid. And uh, this is me at the end of the day. Mm-hmm, isn't that great? I digress. I didn't want to go out and buy all new full decor. Um, it's fun, um, I really can't do that right now. So I decided to make a video, show you what I do with some of my old decor. I mean, it's not that old. I bought it last year. The best time to shop is after the holidays. I love doing that. I get things for pennies, literally. Even if you don't like the color, you could paint it, you could do all kinds of stuff. Let's go see what I did. So like I said, buying things after the holidays really pays off. I got a bunch of pumpkins, ceramic pumpkins from Michael's last year. I paid maybe about $2 each, honestly. They were a steal. Joann's had a beautiful leather pumpkin for $9.99. It was on sale, but it wasn't available at my store and I was being cheap. I did not want to pay for shipping. So you guys should already know how I do. If I can't find something, I'm gonna make it myself. I had this tape. It's like a leather repair kit. It's a little pricey. It was about $14, but I was gonna repair a leather chair that I eventually threw out. I figured I might as well use it to create this leather pumpkin that I want so badly. It's a beautiful caramel color. I had no clue how I was going to do this. As a matter of fact, my first try came out like a pumpkin that was best suited for Mr. Frankenstein himself. I must have forgotten to take my medication. I have no idea what I was doing. But the best part about this tape is that it's so pliable. You can literally pull it off and then redo it. And that's exactly what I did. Instead of putting it on like a lunatic, I decided to go from top to bottom, sort of like overlapping at the seam, cutting the strips at the seam, and then just placing a new piece on. And I did this all the way around. I mean, you can basically see what I'm doing here. At least I hope. Wouldn't be a true Cuban Curls video if there wasn't a mishap. I don't know if you noticed, the stem broke while I was doing this. No problems, I just glued it right back on with some E6000. And then I took some leather cord and wrapped it around the bottom of the stem just to hide all the ugly. And believe me, there was a lot of ugly. It didn't come out exactly the way I imagined it would. It's not perfect, but it's a leather pumpkin and I love it. Now these pumpkin revivals that I have coming up are really easy. I had some green pumpkins. This one's actually blue green, but I'm gonna give them two coats of chalk paint. I got this at Home Depot and the color is primitive. It's a really nice grayish color. I'm so tired of painting everything white, even though, you know, I love white, but this is actually also a nice neutral. Now what inspired this makeover were these German glass glitter pumpkins that Pottery Barn was selling for $33.50 and that was on sale. So when I saw them on the computer, it didn't really look like glitter. It looked more like stone, and that is what inspired my project. I don't do glitter at all in my home. Nothing against anybody that likes glitter. It's just not something that I like, personally. After the two coats of paint, I went in with this Rust-Oleum Stone Textured Paint. It's in the bleach stone. Everybody and their mama is using this to upgrade or revamp vases. I really like the way this worked, but just make sure that you pre-paint your project first. This doesn't give you full coverage, but in my opinion, it works really well for that stone effect. I didn't cover the stem you can if you're gonna leave it brown. I wanted to distress mine with a little gold paint, and that was it. Super simple DIY. I am really loving the way that these pumpkins came out. They really fit my style so much better. You know, green is really not my color unless, you know, it's greenery or something. But this was really simple to do, and it really does look like they are stone. I don't think the camera does this any justice. It really looks beautiful in person.
I totally forgot. I had three more pumpkins, actually. I'm a pumpkin hoarder. And I spray painted them with some charcoal spray paint, and then I distressed them with some gold paint. And I love the way they came out. I'm trying to incorporate a little more black in my decor. Love these. For my next makeover, I'm going to be using this tabletop Hello Fall pumpkin. I picked this up at Michael's. It was originally $10. Definitely would not have paid $10 for it, but I got it for a couple of bucks on clearance. So I'm just going to start removing all of the metal that was on there. Then I'm going to sand it. Cute the way it was, but I didn't want it to be orange. Now I'm going to take a piece of this old pleather belt that does not fit around my waist anymore. Then again, what does fit around my waist anymore? <laughs> I'm going to take a piece of that belt and I'm going to cut it to size. I printed off the word thankful from my computer or something I found online and I just printed it out. And I wanted the piece of the belt to actually fit the word right in the middle. Once again, I got inspiration from online Kirkland's this time, and I saw this really cute orange pumpkin that was $12.99. It had the word thankful engraved on a piece of leather, and it inspired me to make my own. I took a piece of carbon paper the same size as the word thankful. I went ahead and taped everything onto the piece of leather and just traced the word out. So my plan and my bright idea was to write the word thankful with my wood burning tool. Now that didn't quite work out. It looks like my seven month old grandson wrote this himself. So needless to say, I had to get another piece of belt, trace over it, went over it with a pen because I couldn't find my permanent marker and eventually went over it with the permanent marker because I ended up finding it. Two of these upholstery nails that were in the antique brass finish, I picked them up at Home Depot and I hammered one on either side. It's not exactly the same, but I absolutely love it. For my final makeover, I'm going to take this twig wreath that I picked up at Joann's last year. I think it was like $10 on clearance. I really love that whole Twiggy look. Not Twiggy, the actress and singer. <laughs> I'm dating myself. But the twigs. And I did not like the orange berries. So what I did was I just snipped them all off. Now staying with my true love for neutrals, I went ahead and spray painted them all with this ivory silk spray paint from Rust-Oleum. Now it did take a minute, you know, you have to spray paint them, wait for them to dry, turn them around, but I love the way they came out. I told you guys I'm a pumpkin hoarder. I had some small plastic pumpkins that I wanted to add to the wreath, and I just painted them with some nutmeg brown and some burnt umber. I also spray painted some of them with that same ivory silk spray paint. Now, believe it or not, I didn't have any leaves. I told you I did not want to go out and buy anything. So I took this metal leaf from one of the other pumpkins that I painted, used it as a template to make leaves out of canvas material that I had laying around, traced it, cut it, and boom, I had a leaf. Now, I didn't want to glue the leaves straight onto the wreath because I'm fickle. Next year, it may be orange that I like, in fact. So what I did was just glued, hot glued, some of the extra berry stems that I had onto the back. And that's how I'll attach them. Now, I didn't want to glue my pumpkins either, so I just hot glued some of the Dollar Tree wire into a hole that I made underneath the pumpkins, and voila, there you go. And to put this whole thing together, I started off by just inserting some of the larger berries into the wreath. I didn't have to glue. I just shove them in there. I'm definitely no wreath expert. I just went all the way around with them, placing them where I thought they would look best. And then I added some of these little picks that I got from Joann's last year, also on clearance. I think I paid maybe like $1.50 for each bag. They were originally $5.99. And now it's time to add my pumpkins. I just do it the same way, whatever way I think looks good. Then I add my leaves. I don't know if you're supposed to add your leaves first, second, third, who knows, but it all worked out.
It's so crazy, I was gonna give this wreath away. This was definitely a labor of love for me. I don't make wreaths on my channel because I really don't know how to make them. I don't have an eye for them. If you wanna see a good wreath, you go over to Megan from Glue Guns and Roses. She is the queen of wreaths in my book. But I really do love the way this wreath came out. All still very neutral hues, the browns and the ivory. Very, very nice for fall if you have a neutral palette like I do. So there you have it, my friends, all of my updated decor. I'm really not decorating a whole lot this year, but I'm really happy that I didn't go out and fall into that trap that I do every year and buy tons of stuff. With a little bit of paint and some love, you can upgrade what you already have and save some money. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Do all of the things. Hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. I have some exciting stuff coming up. And subscribe if you're new. And you like what you saw, of course. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in my next one.